uh, at this point in time, we're almost nine months through the year. We're just about nine months into a, a bear market. Uh, are you still looking to incrementally play more defense or to get more aggressive? Yeah, I think you need to look at these things as opportunities because you brought up a good point here, right? Markets are down more than 20% right now. So especially as a longer-term investor, you do want to make sure that you are, are taking advantage of these opportunities. That being said, I don't know if we're at the end of all this volatility yet. I think the markets are really going to be looking at every single data point that's coming out to show is inflation coming down or not. So just on Friday, we're going to get the PCE numbers. I think that'll probably be the next piece of data. We need to get some more jobs reports. But until we start to see that inflation's coming down, we'll probably have a lot more choppiness. But as a longer-term investor, there are still places to be adding to. So you don't want to just wait until things are going to come past, because I'm starting to hear that from a lot of clients, like, oh, I'm not going to give you any cash. Let's wait until things calm down. You'll probably have missed the opportunity when things are already better. I'm interested in, in essentially the, the, the gives and takes on energy. I mean, uh, Courtney, is it a place that you still think uh, because of those macro factors and because the way the companies are behaving, it's still uh, a good place for fresh money at this point? I, I mean, I, I liked energy weeks ago, so I'm definitely going to like it now when it's yeah. even cheaper, right? Um, but yes, I think a lot of this is being sentiment driven more so than the fundamentals. And all those supply ch supply demand constraints have not been solved yet. And they're likely not going to for quite a while here. So I think if anything, you're going to want to look at energy as likely of something that will probably continue to do well. Yes, it might still have some more pain here, but no, I, I, I would agree. I think that's one of our favorite, favorite sectors at the moment. The big question to um, Courtney as we get to this point in the year, you know, Jim Bullard of the St. Louis Fed at one point not too long ago said, I still think it makes sense to have most of what we need to do on rates done in 2022. Like this seems like there's a there's a scenario in which we get into next year and we look back and say, you know what, that was the payback year mm -hmm. uh, in terms of what you had to do with policy, uh, resetting yields up from a decade of near zero, all this other thing. Are we getting or nearing a point where we're going to be able to see that destination? I think the question, I mean, nobody knows what's in the Fed's mind. They keep trying to tell us. Uh, but something maybe is going to force their hand to say, you know, we maybe can't get as much done as we thought we could. Well, I think that that's the hope, right, is that we do start to see an end of it. I think that's what the markets need, is they need to see some sort of light at the end of the tunnel in order for them to price higher. And they started to see that, right? They made up a lot of the lows after June, after there was a lot of data coming out showing that inflation was, in fact, coming down. But now the Fed has come out over and over again and just showing how hawkish they're going to be. And that's why the markets have just retraced their lows again. Yeah. So we need to see some of this data. And I think ultimately it is going to become, uh, it's a certain point unsustainable if inflation is like is this high, if they keep raising rates. So, yes, we're going to have to see that in the data coming forward.